Today we are going to deal with the most important and the basic uh, information about phonetics that is three term labels. If you are able to grasp this three term label then it is very easy for you to go through the entire course of phonetics. Now we have to look forward that what do you mean by three term labels. In the most simplified language one can easily understand three term label as nothing but identification or a description of a speech sound. Just like you can be identified among the um, people in the form of your first name, then your middle or father's name and the last one is the surname. In the same way, you will find out that each speech sound is identified or described in terms of the three term labels. So three term labels is nothing but an identification or description of that particular speech sound. Now we have to look forward. What do you mean by three term labels here? Okay, so let's begin. In case of three term label, you will find out that the three term label as I already described you, that three term label is nothing but identification and description of sound. The first term is indicating voicing. The second term is indicating the place of articulation and the third term is indicating manner of articulation. So all these are the three terms. Let us go into the deep uh, study of these three term labels in order to understand them well. What do you mean by first term that is vocal cords or voicing? What is the position of vocal cords and how they works in the production of a particular sound that will describe the first term and that is known as that is divided into two broad categories one is voiced and other is voiceless. Students now look at that in case of vocal cords you will find out that vocal cords is nothing but a kind of a wall like structure is there okay this is larynx okay this is larynx and inside this larynx you will find out that the vocal cords are placed vocal cords are nothing but a, like this like a structure here you will find out that the two walls are there two doors are there and actually there is no space for the air to travel through this um, uh, gap so obviously when the air passes through the lungs and when it goes or when it passes through the uh, windpipe then you will find out that they they are traveling through this windpipe and when these vocal cords are closely uh, joined together then the air passes through the vocal cords with some kind of a vibration naturally the air passes and the vocal cords get separated and so there is a little bit vibration so all those sounds are known as you can say voiced sounds whereas in case of the other category that is voiceless sounds you can see in case of this one you can see here that the voiceless sounds are produced when there is a little gap in the vocal cords and so the air can be passes can be passed through these vocal cords without any vibration don't take the literal meaning of voiced and voiceless because voiced and voiceless these are the terms associated with the vibration of vocal cords and the passing of air through the vocal cords so there are 15 voiced sounds and nine voiceless sounds are there now don't get confused or don't take tension at all in order to memorize all these things how to memorize all these voiced and voiceless sounds that we will see in the end of this video now we will see in case of the second one that is the organs of speech which are involved in case of the production of a particular sound look at the first term that is bilabial what do you mean by bilabial that we have to see here in case of bilabial you will find out that bi means two and labial means lips all those sounds which are produced with the help of two lips are known as bilabial sounds examples are p b m and w you can find out p b w and m all those productions of sounds 
which take place with the help of lower lip and upper lip lower lip touches to the upper lip and they makes the sound p b m and w in the same manner you will find out that these sounds are produced now we will see the next one that is alveolar alveolar is also known as teeth ridge and it makes a combination with tip and blade of the tongue in the production of sounds like t d s dh l and n teeth ridge is nothing but the part of the hard palate which is just behind the teeth upper teeth the next term is velar velar is a combination of back of the tongue and soft palate okay and they produce the sounds like k g and g if you try to pronounce these sounds then you will find out that the back of the tongue is raised and it touches to the soft palate soft palate is nothing but the part of the soft palate is just behind the uvula and you will find out that the back of the tongue is raised and it touches to the soft palate in the production of these sounds like k g and g now we'll see another some organs of speech which are involved and these are the terms like labio dental now you are familiar with the word like labio labio means again the lips and dental means teeth when the lower lip touches to the upper teeth and when they produce the sounds like f and w you have to be very careful about the sounds of this particular two sounds because it is commonly observed that indians are making bilabial f for example when you say fat fat when an indian speaker of english try to pronounce the word like fat or form then you will find out that we use bilabial sound we use bilabial organs of speech here but actually in case of the british rp you have to find out that it is labio dental means the lower lip lower lip touches to the upper teeth for example when a indian speaker say it say he says p w p w means lower lip touches to the upper lip but actually in case of labio dental you have to keep into mind that labio dental is only when produced when you are lower lip touches to the upper teeth for example fat fat form fa okay so that's a make a major difference uh, between indian speakers of english and particularly this uh, foreign speakers of or british speakers of english language let's move towards the next one that is dental dental is again a combination of tip of tongue and upper teeth in case of tip of tongue and upper teeth you will find out that <coughs> the sounds like th d are produced so it is commonly observed that those people who lost their teeth due to old age they were unable to produce the clarity in their pronunciation or sounds okay just like child and old aged people if they don't have the teeth then naturally there is a little bit problem or in clarity in case of the production of sounds like th and d next term is palato alveolar what is palato alveolar it is a combination of blade and front of the tongue which makes a combination with alveolar ridge and hard palate for example sh j ch and j you will find out that now tip is not active here but blade and front of the tongue becomes active in case of this one and obviously it makes a closure with alveolar ridge and hard palate now look at the very few other remaining you can say the organs of speech which are involved in different production of sounds like post alveolar post in the sense which comes later and so tip of the tongue is making a closure with back part of the alveolar ridge that is r r 
try to produce this sound r then you will find out that tip of the tongue is raised and it makes a closure with alveolar ridge but there is some gap between these two articulators and the air passes continuously through this uh, in the production of this sound like r okay the last one is glottal glottal is nothing but as we have already seen that in case of glottal you will find out that this sound is produced through glottis glottis is nothing but an empty space which is uh, available in, in the gap of vocal cords and so the air passes without any frictions and it produces the sound like h huh, h huh. try to produce this sound then you can experience or realize that the air passes without any obstruction and we try to produce the sound like h huh. so this is all about the second term now we have to move forward towards the third term what is the third term that we have to see here that is manner of articulation manner of articulation is indicating that how the air is released obviously air is the prime requirement of the production of sound and when the air passes through uh, either through oral cavity or through nasal cavity it differentiates or it makes two broader categories one is oral sound and other is nasal sounds when you are producing the oral sound there are 21 oral sounds and only three uh, you can say the nasal sounds are there these three nasal sounds are like m n and g we will go into the details of this manner of articulation right now in order to better understand uh, this manner of articulation here now look at that in case of manner of articulation you will find out that manner of articulation has different labeling the first one is plosive plosive is a word which is originated or derived from the word explosive explosive indicating a sudden release of air how the air is released will decide its term so you have to keep in mind the third term is all about the release of air the method of releasing air how the air is released with friction without friction with explosion or uh, you can say slips uh, from the gap of two articulators that we have to see here now take the example of this plosive now in case of the plosive you'll find out that there are six plosives and these are p b t d k and g okay just take one experience just keep your hand in front of your mouth and you can find out that when you try to produce the sound like p just try to pronounce it p p p p you will find out that there is a breath there is a you can feel the air on your hand why because the air is released with uh, all of a sudden and so it is known as a plosive sound in my next video i will give you an animated uh, you can say the description and motion of all these how these articulators produce this kind of sounds the next one is affricate in case of affricate you will find out that there is a complete closure of articulator there is a blocking of ear and slow release with audible friction this is very important audible friction okay what are these sounds these sounds are like ch and j okay there is a complete closure try to produce these sounds and you can realize it the next term is fricative fricative is a term which is describing those sounds which are produced without any closure but the air passes through the narrow gap between articulators look at these sounds f v th d s j sh j ch j all these sounds are produced with uh, as the air passes through the narrow gap between two articulators which took place in case of these sounds now look at other some examples of manner of articulation lateral you have to focus on this word lateral lateral is indicating a partial closure of articulators 
and air releases through both sides of the tongue. You have to keep into mind, in case of this L, you will find out that the tip of the tongue touches to the alveolar ridge and what exactly happened that there is a gap, there is a gap. For example, this is the tongue, this is a tongue and this is a palate. Then you will find out that it touches to the palate and you can feel, you can feel that the air is trapped here and the air will passes through the both sides of the tongue and we try to produce the sound like L. So, you can easily observe that in case of lateral, lateral means both sounds. Then the next one is semi-vowel. Okay, now we are familiar with this word semi because we use it in day-to-day -day language, semi-English and semi, uh, you can say the prefix that is used in most of the cases. But here semi-vowels, semi-vowels are vowels which functions like consonants. And what are these? There are two vowels, one is Y and other is W. We will go into the details of these sounds in my next video. Frictionless continuant. Don't ratify these terms. Just understand them well. Frictionless continuant. Continuant is a word which indicates a continuous flow of the air. Air is released continuously. This is very important. Continuously through narrowing gap between articulators and we try to produce the sound like r try to produce the sound like r try to produce the sound like l then you will find out that in case of l there is a partial closure and sudden release there is partial closure and the articulators come to the normal position but in case of the production of sound like r you will find out that the air passes continuously so it is known as frictionless continuant okay at the last but the most important is nasal. As I already told you, all the previous sounds were oral sounds and now we have to focus on the nasals. Nasals is the word used or derived from the nasal cavity. Anything that is related with nose is known as a nasal. So, nasal is nothing but those sounds which are produced due to complete closure of articulators in the oral cavity as the oral cavity is set off or blocked obviously the air is released through the nasal cavity and we can see these three sounds are there that are m n and g okay these are the three sounds which are termed as nasals okay but the remaining previous 21 sounds are to be considered as oral sounds because they are produced through the oral cavity so you will find out that in case of all these terms you have to just identify and you have to just go into the detail of each word and what do you mean by that particular word just understand it don't rectify it because rectification is not the solution just understand the concept very well then it is possible that you will be able to get all these things as I already promised you that I will give you the easiest sequence to memorize consonants. Now we will see one by one all these uh, sounds and their three term label. Look at that. If you try to copy it down then it is a very beneficial thing for you. Just follow this sequence. Okay. You will find out that what is the most important thing is here that you will find out that the first blue colored sounds are plosive sounds and you have to just understand that one is voiceless other is voiced again voiceless voiced this kind of an alternate structure is uh, purposefully uh, you can say design here and you will find out that there is only a little bit difference voiceless bilabial plus plosive and voiced bilabial plosive now you will find out that it is followed by the fricatives then it will be followed by two affricates and then it will be followed by some exceptional cases are there obviously some exceptional cases are there but at least we try to find out that in most of these you will find out that they out of six you will find out that the five of them are voiced so if you just follow them then you can easily understand this sequence and the last one is nothing but the combination of nasal sound so these if you follow this easiest sequence because this sequence is not available in any textbook just go through this 
sequence then it will be very easy for you to memorize all these 24 consonants with their three term label so that you can easily understand the future course of this phonetics and you have to keep into mind that all this sequence has certain logic behind it okay the textbooks generally they provide has something a different one okay but i insist that you just follow this sequence because this sequence will be easy to follow just for your sake i would like to just uh, pronounce all these sounds sequentially pub tad kag pav thad saj shaj chaj yaralav ha ma na ng okay these are the 24 consonants that we have to focus in this video now in the next video i would like to show you literally and with animation with the help of animated figures uh, in my next video you will be able to see how these sounds are produced okay so don't forget to subscribe my channel that is vitamin e and my name is dr girish i am from parbhani and so just be in tune with me in order to get your english improvement thank you